Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This video topic has been requested a lot so it seems like there are plenty of people and companies out there wanting to know exactly how this is done and most importantly how it will benefit them. I'm talking about 3D modeling or digital twins using drones. Now before I get into this video, amongst many other priceless industry secrets about using drones for inspections are in our masterclass courses. So click in the link in the description below if you're serious about starting a drone business or getting into UAVs for work. So before I show you how it's done, let's chat first about why. Why is it needed? Why do we want to create 3D models of structures, buildings, telco towers, chimneys, and so on? Yeah, I get it looks cool and all when you see it, play around with it, move it around, zoom in, zoom out, or even present it in a boardroom meeting, but why do you need to create a digital twin of an asset? I think the answer can be summarized into five main reasons why. Number one, it's visually impressive. Let's not lie, if you look at a boring structure like an asset, power line, power pole, telco tower, but when it's presented in a form that looks like a PlayStation game, which you can physically move around, zoom in and out and get different looks, it will definitely turn some heads. Number two, data interpretation. Traditionally, inspectors would have to either look through a file buried on their desktop computer somewhere or server and sift through hundreds, if not thousands of photos just to get to what they are after. Now, if you think about assets like power lines or mobile towers, all these kind of images kind of look the same. This would be a huge task looking through all those images just to get to one insulator or one corroded bolt that is on the inside of the second phase, for example. The ability now to interpret this data is incredibly more advanced and fast. Number three, efficiency. The data is reviewed at a fraction of the time and incredibly accurate. So think about the thousands of images in a folder compared to a digital twin. You can get to the important parts you want straight away and when you're there, the images have been taken at 20 megapixels just meters away, which means you can zoom in for a closer look without losing quality. Number four, downstream usability and collaboration. Now once these models are created, they are hosted in the cloud, which means it can be utilized by numerous downstream users, including inspectors, linesmen, uh, project managers, engineers, internal and external stakeholders, and even other companies that are working on the same asset. So with permission, anyone and everyone can access this data for the overall benefit of this project. And finally, number five, AI or artificial intelligence. This isn't actually that far off. It exists already in some inspection programs, but we will start seeing more of this very soon, which is very, very exciting. Basically, the software will pick up any discrepancies or differences from the previous historical data sets and will tell you in seconds what's going on. So for example, the software might flag a crack in the wall that wasn't there last time you inspected. Very powerful stuff. Project background. Okay, a quick background on a chimney stack project that we were engaged in. We were actually contracted by a company that is a, a working from heights company. They couldn't gain rope access because the structure was just way too old. It was over 100 years old. Um, and it just wasn't safe to do so. The business that hired them needed to provide a structural inspection, and I believe it was one of those routine things where they just needed to see if it was structurally sound and it's not gonna topple over on anyone anytime soon. At the top of this chimney, there is a big concrete slab and it's been there for a while now. Um, uh, there's also a whole bunch of different wires and hinges and bolts running all the way up the chimney. So I assume this is also something they would like to get a closer look at. Equipment. Which drone is best for 3D modeling? Now there's a few different things you need to consider and there's also some best practices for this kind of work. The first thing is the camera type. Now in terms of megapixels, this isn't really a big issue, but try and go for anything above 12 megapixels. That would be ideal. Most of the new drones are around 20 megapixels and this is way more than enough. You will also need to be shooting JPEGs for this, not RAWs. RAWs are just way too large and you don't need all that extra information as you're not color grading. So we tested this site with four drones. There was a Mavic 2 Pro, an Inspire 2 with the X7 camera, 
an M200 and the M300 using the thermal camera. We wanted to get an idea of which one performed the best and to be honest, it was really hard to tell the difference visually. They all flew and performed really, really well. The most efficient one was the Mavic 2 Pro in terms of flight times and battery management. This is due to the really, really good power to weight ratio on these little drones. One thing also we didn't use and probably would have got a really good result from is the Phantom 4 Pro. The reason for creating a really good data set from this drone is that it has a mechanical shutter, which is ideal for surveying 3D modeling and is another reason why the Phantom 4 has been an industry standard surveying drone for all these years. A mechanical shutter is far better for this kind of work versus an electronic shutter which is responsible for the rolling shutter effect which warps your shot due to the line by line reading when the image is fired. Most photos you take from your phone will look like this when you take a photo of something like a fan or a propeller or some kind of object that's moving quite quickly. However, keep in mind that this would only be a big issue if your drone is moving fast and your shutter speed is relatively slow. If you, however, hover, shoot, move, hover, shoot, then there won't really be an issue with this as this is how we did it with, our, with this particular project. Now, if you're moving fast while capturing, then this is where you will get some kind of rolling shutter and blurriness in your 3D model. In summary, if you can, always try and get a drone with a mechanical shutter. This is always best practice. However, the Mavic 2 Pro and the X5S cameras are still completely fine to use. It just comes down to really how much you want to flex on site and if you have access to these kind of drones. All right, method for capturing 3D models. There are two ways to do this. There's a manual way or an automated way. You can capture this structure by using an automated flight program such as Drone Deploy, DJI Go 4, Pix4D, or even Drone Harmony. Where possible, try and use an automated flight for your capture as it will produce a consistent result with regards to photo intervals and also the distance from the structure. So for towers and chimney stacks, I recommend you using the automatic orbit with a manual yaw. This is so you ensure the subject is centered within the frame at all times. This is exactly what we did for this chimney stack project, which I'll get into in a minute. So in the DJI Go 4 app, you select the point of interest in the intelligent flight modes. Use the method where you fly above the structure to mark the center of the circle. Then you move the drone physically back and get into the first position of where you want to start your capture. Then you hit go. Now remember to adjust your speed to the slowest first then you can gradually speed this up. You can manually hit the shutter button or you can set the images to fire automatically on an interval shooting mode. As you're orbiting around this structure, you're literally just controlling the tilt of the camera and also adjusting the altitude whilst maintaining this perfect circle around the chimney stack. If you get into a bit of trouble, you can always hit the pause button or you can even just fly the whole thing manually if you like. Overlap. Okay, let's talk about the overlap. This probably is the biggest reason why most 3D models fail and the reason is the overlap. The key number to remember is 75. 75% overlap on the top, bottom and sides. Now if you're not too sure, you can always shoot a little bit higher, so say 80% overlap, just to be certain. Overlap is really important as the software needs as much information as possible to use as a reference when stitching the model together. All right, resolution. So if you want a specific resolution for your model like 4 mil, this will depend on a few things like the sensor size, megapixel count on your camera, overlap and GSD. So GSD is the ground sampling distance. This is the distance from the, the structure to the camera or the ground to the camera. If you're using Trendspec, they have an offset calculator on their website. So I'll put the link in the description. Go check that out. If your client wants to be able to see hairline cracks on the bricks or concrete, for example, you would need a sub 2 mil resolution. And also we would recommend the use of an RTK system of some kind. So an whether it's a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, which has an RTK system, or a Phantom 4 Pro, which also has an RTK system on that. Now this will help with the software uh, when it stitches the images together and piece the model because of how advanced that GPS 
is on this drone. Now we were using a 20 megapixel camera flying around this tower at about six meters from the structure, which gave us about a two mil resolution. So I'll put up on the screen now, this is an example of the quality you can expect to see when zooming all the way in. So once again, that's six meters GSD or ground sampling distance. If we were flying a little closer and had even more of an overlap, we would probably be able to get a higher resolution. But to be honest, this is all we needed and this is all the client was requesting. Focus, all right, let's talk about focus. Another important factor, always ensure the subject is in focus before you fire the shots. If you're maintaining an even distance at all times, tap on the screen to focus before you shoot and then you won't need to keep checking that focus over and over. But this is only if you maintain the same distance from that structure. But once again, if this is the first time you're doing this, always tap to focus every time before you shoot. Unfortunately, if the shots are not in focus, there is nothing you can do about this in post and you'll probably have to go back and reshoot. Okay, next up, let's talk about the camera settings. Firstly, always try and capture during the day. This is when your camera works the best and doesn't have to overwork for you. And if you shoot later on in the day, it might struggle to artificially brighten the image for you, then giving you a bad result. Okay, so below are the best practice camera settings for capturing 3D models. First one, JPEGs only. Always shoot JPEGs, you don't need to shoot RAW. Number two, select aperture priority if you can. And number three, make the aperture or the f-stop between 5.6 and f11. This is where your lens is at its sharpest. And number four, don't let your ISO go over 800. Anything over 800 will make your image much really noisy and blurry and once again produce a really bad data set. Next one is manually select white balance. Do not use auto, never use auto for this. If it's a sunny day, select sunny. If it's cloudy outside, select cloudy, just not auto. And the next one, exposure, if you can, select the center weighted icon. Now this will ensure that the center of your frame is exposed correctly. Don't worry about the outside of the frame if it's overexposed and blown out and if you're not getting your blue sky, it doesn't matter. It isn't a bad thing for capturing 3D models. Okay, and lastly, the horizon, another very important factor. Keep in mind that when you're shooting to create a 3D model, you need to make sure that your horizon is not in the frame at all. So your photos, you need to either capture below the horizon or above the horizon. Just do not capture the horizon. This will muck up the stitching process on this software end and once again produce a bad result. All right guys, so this is basically the full capture process in making 3D models using drone. I hope this has helped you. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more of this. There'll be plenty more videos coming up. And as I mentioned, we also cover this process plus more in our online courses at DMA, Drone Masterclass Academy, so go check that one out. That's it, I'll see you guys in the next one.